Warning, the following video might contain some moments that might not, that might not be suitable for younger viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Best friends look out for you, huh? And it did. I might have still been able to walk. It all began not long ago. My friend Doug, his girlfriend Christy, and I were playing a forest outing, as we like to call, out, call it. Of course, I was the one stuck packing the car while they were just lying on the couch inside the warm house. It occurs under my breath as I crammed the last bag of clothes inside the back of the uh, rough press. A short time later, they came out of the house, crisply blushing and warming than usual. As Doug uh, drove us the icy and clean road, I couldn't help feeling a big creep out. I kept seeing his car following us the whole way, but every time I tried to tell Doug about it, the car would vanish. But I guess being in a backseat having nothing better to do than be paranoid on this frosty slope in the dark, in the dark, can make your mind wander. We finally made it to the campsite at about 7.30 p.m. and started setting up camp. Doug was stuck on tent duty, while Christy and I got firewood duty. Back then, I had a secret crush on her, so I was pretty nervous when we when we somehow ended up tripping on each other. I had broken into a cold sweat, and she managed to get up. I'm not sure, but I think she found it as awkward as I did. After gathering a large amount of firewood, we started heading back to camp. It took us about five minutes to find our way back. We've been scared there, scared there for a second. We arrived at camp and dropping and I dropped the logs, gaping at, in shock at what the sight behind beheld. The entire camp had been torn down, and Doug was nowhere to be found. We heard a loud thumping noise not far from camp. Then again, and finally once once more, the funds only got louder, and Christy began getting close to me. Needs to say, I was kind of happy, yet terrified. I told her to stay as I moved to identify the noise. It was Doug. He was attempting to run from a large silhouette figure, silhouetted figure, swinging what ha appeared to be a hatchet at him. The shadow was in a full sprint, trying to dis dismember my friend. Doug let a loud, blood-curdling shriek as the axe barely avoided his head. He scrambled to safety, and the figure had lost sight of him. Unluckily, the fiend caught me in its sights. It charged towards me. Christy had run off to investigate the cause of the shriek from Doug. Poor Christy, she should have known it. it known it was a terrible idea. She should have just stay put. I stumbled to the Prius, but when I got there, I realized something. Doug had the keys. I saw the shadow approach me, now at a slower pace, wondering what was left of Christy. I was horrified to see her internal organs become external. I knew to puke and began letting out the most unpleasant and ter unpleasant, terrifying screech ever. I sat up and began throwing my fists fiercely at the lunatic. It felt a few, I could tell. Until he brought the hatchet to my back, I felt an intense splitting pain in an attempt to register what had just happened. I screamed for Doug to come help me. He just kept hiding as the figure shambled slowly toward his vehicle. The car drove off. I was left with a, the bottom half of my spine in shards. Shortly after, Doug took one glance at me. He grimaced and entered the Prius without a word. He was shaking as he started the vehicle, and he had just left me. Left me to die out there. He spaced one detail through. I had the phone. The police arrived in minutes, and an ambulance rushed me to the hospital. Upon recovering, I was questioned. It's been a week since then, and they've, they've given up the search. I have yet to see Dog again, and I love him every second for what he's done. I hope I never see that waste of space for as long as I live, which sadly, as I am told, isn't much longer. So, yeah, so that was camping a uh, creepypasta, you know, and possibly, you know, one of the non gaming creepypastas I've ever done. So yeah, and also the non lost episode of creepypasta. Since I think it's like the second time in a row I, I did something a bit original that wasn't like gaming or uh, lost episode related. But overall, this is actually a pretty good story, you know. Since it has that like Friday the Thirteenth vibe with the uh, you know the the campsite and the supposed uh, k killer that was on the loose at the campsite and and all that. You know, this is gonna be like just like a fun short read for like Friday for Teen fans. You know, you know because they're still waiting for that new movie. Because hopefully that 
could finally get announced soon, or like a TV series on Friday the 13th, you know, the new one, not the old one that came out back in like the 80s up until the 90s, I guess. But yeah, pretty good creepypasta that wasn't like gaming or Lost Episode related. Yeah. So anywho, guys, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, creepypasta reading video. Uh, and uh, like and comment the video and subscribe for more content. So, bye-bye.